So I'm Tavet, and I started an uh, international money transfer platform called TransferWise with my, with my friend Christo uh, a couple, couple of years ago. I'm a bit surprised that listening to what the previous speakers have said, they've said that they focus very much on tech because they can do things, or they focus on doing things in a certain way because that's what they think is right, or focusing on design is, is the key to their success. No one has, um, has focused so, much, so far on, uh, on consumers, and I think that's, uh, that's somewhat uh, surprising, uh, surprising to me. I think focusing on your consumers is actually the, the real source of innovation and, uh, and the real, real thing that is guiding you to do the right thing. But let me go one step back and uh, talk, quickly think about innovation. So oftentimes we, we here believe that innovation, especially is a disruptive kind of innovation, is really only come to us recently with the internet. Uh, I hate to break it to you. Sorry, I hate to break this to you, but innovation has been around for a very long time before. You now we can think back. You know, there was uh, the car, which disrupted the horse. Uh, then there was uh, then there was Walmart, which disrupted the mom and pop stores. Then if we go to the modern technology age, it was. Uh, microcomputers, a PC, which disrupted the mainframe. So innovation has been around for a long time, and just maybe now innovation is becoming slightly faster thanks to internet and global distribution and whatnot. Tech companies tend to say that innovation runs in their blood, it's in their DNA. Many times in tech companies, the way innovation happens is that designers or engineers think about, we can do something because it's cool. Uh, I think what you really need to think about is what consumers think is cool and how can you, how can you do that. So at TransferWise, we really think about our users. So there's this dad who is sending money to his daughter who is studying abroad. What's cool for him? Or there's a couple who wants to go on vacation. Maybe they live in London, they want to go to Greece. How can we help them rent a villa in Greece? Or, or it's about the son who wants to send money back to his parents who might live uh, far away in, in India. So focusing on the users, I think, is what brings you success. For building TransferWise, it was our personal frustration as consumers. It was our frustration with, with the way banks were treating us that led us to do this. So my co-founder, Christo, is on stage. He's a prettier one. Um, so because banks were giving us a service which was very slow and expensive, and mo most of all, it, was un it felt unfair. That's what drove our frustration to start TransferWise. So at the time, I was getting paid in euros, so every month I had to transfer euros to, to the UK, and then he did pounds here. And Christo, he was um, living here and had getting paid in pounds, but he needed some euros to pay back a mortgage. So every month, both of us, um, felt that the banks aren't really giving us a good deal. They aren't doing what they're saying they're doing. They're treating us in an unfair way. So what we did next is Christo put some money from his account here to my account in London. And that's something which is very fast and relatively, relatively easy to do. And what I did is I put some euros from my euro account into Christo's euro account. And then we looked at the exchange rate, which is published in the papers. That's the exchange rate that the banks use between themselves. We use that to convert from euros to pounds. And we found that it's a much quicker way of doing it. It also emotionally feels better because you don't feel that your bank has screwed you. Um, we, we then took it to, to the next stage, and uh, we had a, a few friends join us who were doing this in a, in a, in a Skype chat. And, uh, and that got us thinking that uh, there are millions of people around the world who have this need, and we think we can do something to help them. So when we built TransferWise, we had a pretty big vision, a vision for making money transfer easier and much more, much more fair. We also thought we can make it cheaper. For sure, we've, we've done that in a big way. In the UK, today, TransferWise is about five times faster and about 10 times cheaper than your bank. But more importantly, it's about transparency. It's about not hiding any of your fees, not having a markup on the exchange rate, being brutally honest 
about what you're doing for a consumer. We launched about four and a half years ago. It was me and Christo. So now we are transferring tens of millions of pounds of customers' money every day. We do about 500 million pounds every month, and we save 22 million pounds of bank fees for our customers every month. Coming from two people, me and Christo, to hundreds of employees now, that's a good starting point. Um, so I was mentioning users already, and you know, this was really coming from thinking about how can we do, how can we build a better world for, better world for users. See? And we're trying to take this in a, in a pretty serious way. So when we think about which currencies we launch next, we ask our consumers, our customers, uh, the reason that we're trying to make things faster and faster, and, uh, and hopefully in the not too distant future, money transfer will be instantaneous. See? is because we speak with our users and we realize that speed matters to them. We've realized there is a, a pretty cool relationship between net promoter score and, and how much word of mouth you have. Again, it's, it's by talking to users and analyzing the data we have from our users. So, and having our, our customer support team work closely with product team to have a feedback loop, sir, also I think is, is important and, and lets you take your user feedback in a very, very serious way. And, in rapid cycles. And uh, maybe last, uh, we try to make sure that our teams are measured by impact on users. So, you know, you can't be a tech company if you're not measuring what you're doing. So we're trying to make sure that every team has a KPI which relates to happiness of their customers and, and having, uh, having a real impact there. So consumers are driving change in, in FinTech, but really consumers don't care about fintech. Fintech is something which people in this room think about, but consumers, people on the street, they don't know what fintech is. And really, they, they shouldn't know what that is. Consumers want something which is, which is better, more fairer. So fintech is a bubble that we live in in this world. Consumers don't care about fintech. Consumers care about something being much better than it can be. We, last year, we launched an, a campaign for bringing radical transparency to the world of, world of finance. Oftentimes, banks, our competitors, they advertise services as being free, you know, without telling people what's really happening. 86% of people don't know how much they're, being, they're paying for their money transfer, and three quarters of people think that when banks say it's free, it's actually free both of which is radically untrue. So we launched a campaign last year, and uh, we, were, we were good enough in it, and we were able to get enough support from our customers behind it that the Conservative Party actually took it as part of their, part of their election manifesto. And now, when they got re-elected, they promised that we're actually gonna make, it, gonna make it happen. So starting with the UK, it will be it will be prohibited to use the word free to market something which has any hidden fees. And banks and brokers will always have to say what is the real exchange rate they're using and how much is the hidden fees are. I think that's a pretty big step forward and, and it's really more than just innovation. I think it's creating a, creating a little revolution for consumers and we're just facilitating this. So there is a, a lot of room for innovation in financial services, see? but uh, we're quite, quite not sorry yet. You know, if you look at the bigger picture, TransferWise has 2% market share in the UK. You know, if you look at peer-to-peer -peer lending, they might have 1% market share worldwide, so hasn't quite made the leap yet. See? So it's happening and, in a, and the pace is, is accelerating all the time. I think a big reason for this is trust. We have a very special relationship with our banks. Not that we really trust them, but uh, we might trust them more than something else. Uh, you know, and it's, uh, it's about changing that trust, uh, and it's about uh, changing people's behavior, which we need to do more and more, and the speed is gathering pace to, to be able to take this uh, fintech revolution to the masses. It's happening. Uh, I'll share a few more data points on trust. So there's this uh, Sir Edelman Trust Survey which has been done for a while, and uh, um, the question they ask is, do you trust these companies to do the right, si to do the right thing? And if we look at the results, it's, uh, it's quite striking. If we look at left, 
technology companies have the highest trust. Then we go in the middle, we have telecommunication companies. I don't trust my carrier. They're trying to sell me whatever they can, and they never know what I'm paying for, unless I'm paying nothing and using Skype. And in the very end, we have financial services and banks. Well, actually, I'm not right. Shame on media sector for being the least trusted. But uh, I think uh, if, we, if we think about this a little bit, then we can see that technology is trusted. Then this might also help to explain fintech a little bit. It's coming a full circle, and technology companies are taking over finance. It's because people trust technology companies, and they don't trust finance. So I think the trust from technology companies will slowly transfer over to the companies in, um, in finance. Uh, I won't stop on this for, for long, but there is uh, a striking difference in trust when you, look at, uh, how, when you look at how much people trust uh, finance companies in different countries. And uh, you know, it's, I'm, I'm actually frankly surprised with the Indian Indonesia on the top and uh, with the UK in the bottom. Uh, I believe that the old world is more in the bottom because of all the, all the scandals, whether it's a misselling or the bonuses or, or whatever. But uh, it's, um, it's interesting that it's, uh, it's different. Um, when we look at why, sorry, uh, when we look at people's perceptions, this I think is also also striking. So, how do people, what what do people perceive to be the drivers of innovation in uh, in finance? Uh, and what's striking to me is that uh, improving people's lives and making the world a better place comes up at the very bottom. What comes up up on top is uh, is technology. It's kind of we innovate because we can, or it's greed, which is driving, driving innovation. You know, it's, uh, I think that's quite wrong. You, know, you, need, you have to go and start from how can, we world, how can we make the world a better place and how can we make our consumers' lives better. You know, hopefully we'll see this changing. Banks are, are in for, uh, for hard, hard 10 years. See? You know, there's, Bill Gates once said that uh, banking is, uh, is needed, but banks really are not. Uh, uh, and I think the banks that think of themselves as bricks and mortar based institutions are, are heading, for, heading for tough times and they will, be, they will be replaced with something which is much less, uh, much less bricks and mortar and much more, much more innovation and user centric. Uh, think about this example. So Skype has done a similar thing in the telecommunication industry. Skype is today uh, a 12 year old company and they own 40% of international long distance calling. I think that's it's quite striking. And I'm convinced that in a, in a similar way, we will have uh, tech companies own 40% of banking in the, in the next, next years to come. So what's the, what's the future gonna, gonna hold? I have, pretty big vision for, for TransferWise. We do dream of, uh, of a vision for the, for the whole world of, uh, of banking. If it puts a consumer interest in the front, front of us, like TransferWise does, and uh, you know, I believe that number 26 and co Carlos and uh, Funding Circle and all the fintech companies do think of this much more, I think we're looking at, uh, at a pretty, pretty exciting, exciting world as a consumer I'm definitely waiting for, waiting for what's going to come after banks. Thank you. Tarvit, what's the secret to building a unicorn? It's hard work, blood, sweat, and tears. Serious question, though, because there are a lot of companies here that have the ambition to get some of the funders that TransferWise has got to get some of the scalability for growth that you have. If you were running a business school course on how to create the next TransferWise, what are some of the key lessons that you would offer? I think what's really important is to start with a, with a big market. So I, I was part of the team that launched Skype, and I think that's where I, where I learned it, that you have to think of a very big market. That's kind of the... It's the basics. Uh, second thing is staying focused. At TransferWise, there are so many things we could be doing. And you know, we've, we, we dream of lots of stuff, and we've even kind of halfway stepped into trying different things. But then we realize that, bloody hell, this is such a big market. We just need to be 
incredibly focused. And we can be focused on money transfer for the next five or 10 years. And between five to $10 trillion moving around country borders every year. So you know, we can build a business moving 100 billion, 200, 500 billion of that. That's gonna be focus. I think many people have a hard time focusing on this one thing to make sure you can, you can have an impact. And then it's about building the best team and uh, making sure you keep your users' interest uh, front and center of your mind. So what proportion of your team are hardcore tech people? So the so people uh, that work on developing our product, it's actually hard to cut it because customer support plays a role. So it's, uh, I, I find it's, uh, it's hard to give you an answer on this because we have engineers, we have customer support to speak to people, they all feed into creating a better product. And also when you think about finance, then there are other things which, uh, which may give you a better product experience. You know, unfortunately, we have people who work on regulation. You know, it's not what we love to do, but it's important to succeed, so we need to have a big regulatory team. We have a pretty big customer support team because we realize that that's where banks are failing really bad. Having a real human being pick up the phone in 15 seconds makes a huge difference. So in that sense, I think the team structure is, is different slightly, but it all, it's all delivering <coughs> towards, towards our vision. And you mentioned the regulatory team. Um, are the regulators getting it now, or do they still need a bit of an education? So regulators are definitely getting it. It slightly depends on the countries. You know, in some countries, the regulator actually thinks about their users. So they think about the people who, uh, the people who live in that country or state. And they think that, hey, actually, people need this, so it's my job to bring it here. I'm not going to cut any corners, but I'll make sure this service is available to the people who live in this country, because that's going to make their lives better. Um, and there are other regulators who are still driven more by, by the lobbying power of large companies. And, uh, but I think uh, they're, they're getting it that they need to be focusing more on innovation rather than protection. It's a slow process. You know. we're, we're helping as much as we can. Um, last question. If you hadn't gone into the money transfer part of this market, um, what is the other big opportunity in finance innovation that you think you could have set up a company to build? Every vertical of banking is a huge opportunity. Lending, with peer-to-peer -peer lending and non-peer-to-peer -peer lending. Money transfer, and money transfer is probably large enough for multiple people to, 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 to take different niches there. Current account, you know, that's what many people are doing. Um, then wealth management, nutmeg wealth front. I uh, don't think we've seen much in credit card yet. No, there's lots, lots in consumer credit. So every vertical of banking is, is so big that there will be a number of successful companies built there. And then we'll see various mashups between these. So you know, I'm pretty sure that we will power the international money transfer in number 26 in the same way as GoCardless will power the direct debit part in number 26's application. And then, uh, and then maybe there's gonna be a market where we're gonna recommend our users that, hey, number 26 is the best bank you should use because it works best with TransferWise. So we'll see various permutations. Uh, we'll also see that banks will get their act together. It's gonna take them a while. And uh, as I mentioned, a large chunk of the market will be owned by tech companies, but it's gonna be exciting to watch uh, how this plays out. Well, thanks for coming back to share the extraordinary TransferWise stories. Travis, thank you.